atmosphere with his laughter therapy and his humorous speech, which is called My Battle Campaign. There's nothing being worse, nothing worse than being introduced as funny. And <laughs> all you can do is <laughs> 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 The summer campaign ended in November when my adversary and I retreated to our winter quarters. I had achieved a victory in our final skirmish, but I'm not savoring it too much because I have a great deal of respect for my opponent, and I'm sure that when the campaign begins again next month, he'll have some new tricks up his sleeve. I'm waiting anxiously. This is not my first campaign. I'm a veteran of many campaigns. Let me tell you about the longest. I lived in Washington, D.C. When we moved there, I first saw the enemy, and he was handsome, cute, adorable. I loved him. The little squirrels in the trees <laughs> sit like this, eating their acorns with their big tails. And this time of year, between 6 and 8 a.m., the, <laughs> the, the squirrels chase the girl squirrels woo, 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 all around the trees. And I think they catch them every now and again because there are lots of squirrels. <laughs> but then we moved to the suburbs. And my wife said, dear, What about the birds? There are lovely birds in our neighborhood. Finches, nuthatches, <laughs> purple martins, and they need some food. And I thought, these birds have been living here for millions of years. <laughs> I think they know how to feed themselves, but... <laughs> <laughs> yes, dear. <laughs> so I put a, put a bird feeder up. Up on the tree. <laughs> and we bought some bird seed. We put the bird seed in. <laughs> and the birds came and they ate it. And then the squirrels came. <laughs> and they ate it too. Uh, they ate it and they ate it and they ate it. And they scattered it on the ground and they went down to the ground and ate it. Dear, we did go put some more bird seed out for the birds. <laughs> so we went through this a little while. and. Excuse me, squirrels are smarter than birds. <laughs> by, by the time we were done, the birds were getting probably 20 grams out of every kilogram of, of bird seed. Dear, it's time to move the bird feeder. Put it up on the house. The squirrels will never get it. So we put it up on the side of the house. <laughs> Way up here. Boom, 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 boom. Big house. The squirrels aren't going to come. Of course, we can't see the birds, but that's, that, that doesn't matter. Wrong about the squirrels. <laughs> the squirrels look at it and see the birds up there enjoying it. And, they think, mm. and the squirrels come back here, take a flying leap, go, yeah, charge across, go mm, right up, and they bounce up two meters. They sit on top of it, mm, stuffing their faces with the birds, putting it all over the ground, and their squirrel friends come to the ground, and they eat it all. <laughs> that didn't work. Dear, you have to do something. <laughs> okay, so I hang the bird feeder up by a rope, a long rope, stretch from the house to a tree, <laughs> way out in the middle of nowhere. You know what? Squirrels are natural acrobats. <laughs> right down, jump on the bird feeder, shake all the bird seed out, and that didn't work. So I tried a wire. Their skinny little fingers can't even wrap around the wire. <laughs> That slowed him down for a week or so. <laughs> and then some guy, clear up on top of a tree, jumped down, it's four meters down, three meters away from the tree, goes whoa out to the end of a branch, lands on the bridge, oh, whoa, 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 hangs on like that, hangs on with his hind feet up there, mm, eating, scooping out all the seed. At that point, I decide. We're doing the wrong thing here to mess with the balance of nature. <laughs> We're probably not doing the birds a favor by feeding them. They'll get along fine by themselves. 
So that, that's a bit of my campaign history. Now, I moved to Kiev. I live <laughs> across the street from the Vidinsky Bulochki. <laughs> At uh, this time of year, April, they lay set out five tables on the sidewalk where you can take your coffee, your chocolate croissant, your <laughs> newspaper, in the morning <laughs> for a leisurely breakfast. So I went there and I'd sit down, read my newspaper, and I'd look, and I'd see that <coughs> the ground is very neat underneath there. There are pigeons going around and doing, uh, doing nature's work of cleaning up the crumbs under the tables. Well, that's, that's nice. That's the, that's the balance of life. The pigeons earn theirs. And then I watch, and the pigeons are up on top of the tables when the people leave. And um, I'm a little bit nervous. And then there's one brave pigeon who comes uh, over to my table and sits on the back of a chair. This is supposed to be in my pocket. <laughs> sits on the back of a chair like a vulture, watching me eat my croissant. He doesn't want to wait for me to finish. He kind of wants that croissant. <laughs> and so I'm sitting there reading, and he's looking at the croissant. He's looking at me, and I'm paying attention. <laughs> Back and forth. And um, he makes a flutter over there, and I go, oh, shoo, 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 you get out of here. And he goes back, but it doesn't go very far. And <laughs> we play the game again. He comes, flutter, flutter, shoo, shoo. <laughs> and I decide that I'm going to get smarter about this. I play a little sly with him. I pretend I'm not looking at him. And let him get right on over and grab like that. Grab, because uh, I, I want to throttle the little guy. And then I think about that, say, probably just as good that I missed, because what if I got him? I have an angry pigeon, pigeon yelling and screaming in my hand, probably feathers and pigeon poop all over the place, and what would the other diners think? They think, this man is crazy. So, <laughs> no win. I said, I have to get subtler in dealing, in dealing with this. So, the following day, I waited for him again using a trick that I employed in grammar school. <laughs> Sitting there reading my newspaper, watching him, and he comes on over and sits on top of the chair, and I go, very quietly. Bang! Bang! Up like that. What's that? What's that? He didn't see it coming. <laughs> he comes back, I give him another rubber band. <laughs> but I'm thinking, how long can I play this game? First of all, the other diners are going to notice and think, this man's crazy. <laughs> Secondly, there may be somebody there, some American from the People for the Ethic Ethical Treatment of Animals, <laughs> and, they'll, and they'll have me in irons, they'll have me flayed alive. And those are only two of the dangers. The greatest danger is the pigeons themselves. They're smart. They're going to figure the game out. And they're not going to come from cross table, but they're going to come from um, two tables away or over my shoulder or something. You know, I'm terribly worried about this, but I'll tell you one thing I've learned in my winter quarters. It's awfully comfortable inside the Vidinsky Bulletin. Madam Toastmaster. <laughs>